words? Just one. Babies! Hello, everyone. Welcome to Dark Match. I am Tifus. I am your foxy friend Backlash, and if I was and if I knew I was doing the show today, I would have taken it easy on the booze. I wouldn't. I'm Dark Matches Mastodon of the Monotone Christopher says, and I kind of had a feeling I'd be doing the show, but nonetheless, no Arrow Works weekends. <laughs> yeah. And this is Jingus, and we are bringing you our favorite segment. What is Iron Sheik tweeting now? <coughs> Tonight, my agents, G and Morgan, get me to be opening comedy for the fucking Charlie Sheen. Who do I humble tonight? Martin. Oh, apparently, he's on the Jake. Sheen roast, ladies and gentlemen, for Comedy Central. September 19th. Mark your calendars. <sighs> fucking chic on the Charlie Sheen roast. Oh, oh my God. God. It's probably the only God. person that's done near as much crack. <laughs> yes, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to talk about. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, the, wow. the sad thing is, most of MTV's audiences will just hear him say a bunch of shit that doesn't make sense to them. <laughs> it only makes sense to, to Smarks. You're like, I never knew Hulk Hogan's gay lover was so brave. <laughs> what's this on TV? It's going to be like the filthiest fucking thing you've ever heard. They're not going to be able to air this until after 2 a.m., and even then it's going to be heavily censored. They, they always do shit where they air it, like, uncensored after midnight on a Sunday oh, no. or something. And their, and their secret staffs are still going to have to censor this. It's going to be so bad. They're like, okay, 57 bucks? That's, yeah, we got to cut that <laughs> yeah. a little bit. Yeah, and uh, uh, un- inappropriate Randy Savage joke count when they announced Sheik won. <laughs> yeah. Guessing. 27 ethnic slurs. Oh, God. Uh, if there's a Randy Savage joke, you know she's going to beat the shit out of whoever does it. <laughs> or get up, try to walk over to the trip, fall, roll around. <laughs> who else is going to be on? Who else is doing the roast? Because she just might beat the shit out of someone anyway. I don't, I don't know. Bring that she, carrot top. She isn't gonna. Carrot top would actually beat the fuck out of Sheik at this point, honestly. Yeah. Uh-huh. You seen carrot top with his shirt off? Yeah, yeah I've heard him from the flavor flavor roast. Mm. I mean, Sheik is an elderly pothead geriatric. He's not gonna beat the shit out of anybody. He can attempt it, which will be goddamn <laughs> funny. Hell, we might actually have to do a review of the show. I mean, did, did you guys see that the. the uh, God, we're not even starting. We're way off Let's topic. Let's get this shit. Let's just keep but, talking about that sheep you, baby. No, 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 no. We, we, we got no, we got wait, 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 wait. Let me get to do this one. Let me do this one, and then we'll end it. Do you see the one uh, shoot interview they did with Sheik, New Jack, and Honky Talk Man? I've seen oh, clips yeah. of that, specifically the, the moments yeah. where they're talking about Benoit. And, uh... well, it, it's an amazing shoot overall. At, at various times, all three men decide that they, they, they name somebody and let's say, I don't know, Vince McMahon. And they say, hey, Vince McMahon, here's what we think. And all three of them moon the camera. Except Sheik, multiple times, manages to, like, just basically lose his pants, and he's just in a daze walking back and forth with his pants around his ankles. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe there's a moment New where... Jack I... shouting over and over again, Sheik, put your dick up! Like, 20 fucking times. Yeah, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of... Moment kind of uh, I'm kind of brought down on the roast now, because the only other name I see for it is uh, Seth MacFarlane as the Master of Ceremonies. Oh, fuck. oh, he's fucking doing it again. I hate that guy. Yeah. Uh, they, they need to get back to televising the, the Friars Club roasts. The love Give it a shot. shot. Whatever. Anyways, I believe it's time we talk about the uh, Triple H Variety Hour yeah. starring Triple H in France. Yeah, as much as... Much oh, as you're so like, bitter. Uh, so much bitter. Talking about, uh, Deal with it, bitch. <laughs> let, it, let it not be said that we were trying to avoid talking about Raw because... WWE had a pretty pretty good go home week for SummerSlam, yeah. not for the fact that All there's right. so far only four marquee matches there. Not a great show, but a good show. Yeah. Uh, so Triple H comes out and he he basically lays down the line, talks about two uh, WWE champions champions, and this Sunday there's going to be one undisputed champion. When I hear that word, I immediately think of Jericho. Yeah. <laughs> Break the oh. ball down. But uh, hey, that's my line. Alas, he's probably not going to be returning because Fozzie has tour dates in November. Damn it. Uh, 
may not be till even after that. Did anybody read Jericho's second book? Fucking half of it is talking about Fozzie and metal shit. It was it, uh, where you, where you, did you lose touch? Yeah, I mean, I just started skipping over the, the rock music chapters, basically. It's just like, dude, I, okay, yeah, I like Metallica, but come on, I want to hear read your book about wrestling. Well, anyways, um, I don't even know what the fuck happens during this. Um, uh, Triple know, H, at one point, starts talk, like teasing he's going to make a special guest referee, and the entire time is talking about himself, but he's putting over some imaginary special guest referee as being so huge, a man who casts a shadow over both John Cena and CM Punk. That it got me wondering. Uh, <laughs> I was thinking Austin. I thought the, just how he was describing it, and because no. I know that Punk and Austin both want to do that deal together, no. I... I thought that this might be where that started, and no, it's fucking Triple H. Of course, whenever Triple H says crap like this, you know he's talking about himself. Yeah, it's like like he was talking about the goddamn Undertaker. <laughs> you know? I, I knew it wouldn't be Taker right away, not back this soon, and especially since he shaved his head, but... Uh, yeah, that was a letdown when he says, and it's me. Says, God damn it. Well, this could be hinting at like him uh, trying to trying to overly control things, even though it doesn't appear that way. I mean, there, he's definitely gonna definitely gonna overstep his authority. That's that's certain. I think that's gonna be an angle somewhere down the line, if not t- tomorrow night. A problem with Triple H is he doesn't like letting himself look weak. He doesn't like letting his character look weak. And so, and when you've got a person who is the authority figure, the authority figure shouldn't be somebody who can beat the shit out of the people they've got authority over. The entire point of the authority figure is that they've got this abstract power, the, the business and political power over the people in the company. When you add it to, and oh, by the way, he's also triple fucking H, king of kings, he doesn't sell anything, he can beat everybody. It's like, it's a Mary Sue, basically. Yeah. Triple H's current role is a Mary Sue. And isn't he supposed to be fucking retired? Yeah. I mean, from wrestling, at least. Yeah. Um, any... yeah, you think he won't have a match at next year's Mania? Come on. God. And he had dissenting views in terms of his status as a Mary Sue. Anyways, they, they set up a match, and it's Cena versus Swagger. Yay, wrestling, whatever. Uh, both people will be in action tonight, he says, Uh Cena's first and Jack Swagger of all people. I don't. I don't know why Jack Swagger. Because yeah. Swagger needs you know, a time. They just needed when, Cena to beat. They needed Cena to beat somebody decisively and somebody who wasn't a complete jobber. So Jack Swagger. Well, he, no, he's not a complete jobber, but. But I mean, he's like. But but he did have one of the worst. Uh, world title runs so oh, yeah on. but at least you can say hey and because they're building up for the big main event of this pay-per-view punk and cena and it just makes its booking 101 for the show before the pay-per-view to have punk and cena beat the living crap out of guys who are kind of mid mid to top card guys and uh, yeah and plus like neither of them really look weak like, there, there's no, like, yeah. say, like, oh, this one looks weak, so he's obviously going to go yeah. over. Um, and Cena basically fucking squashed Swagger. No, 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 no. I, I just, so was, I, I, thought, I thought he was showcased kind of well. Like, they mm. do, like, I mean, just, just the one distinct point in my mind was when, when he just, like, clicked okay, he did, Cena from the knee and, like, running. He, and, yeah. I, and, and that was well done. And it's not a, it's not an actual squash. A real squash is like a one minute match with no offense. But this was largely a. This is the kind of shit. Do you any you remember the old Saturday shows? Like not back when they used to call it jacked or metal or whatever. You mean uh, shotgun and uh, or shotgun Saturday or just superstars night. for that matter. Um, velocity. Well, velocity. Yeah. Anytime that they'd have like one of. Um, one of the local undercarters versus uh, an indie guy who you knew who the indie guy was, but he wasn't signed to the WWE. Because they used, like, you know, Punk and Carino and Loki and Danielson and a bunch of guys like that. This was the kind of match those two guys have. And he lets the indie guy get his shit in just to, in 
with the when it is the indie guy, it's to let him just show off for the bosses, say, hey, this is what this guy can do, I think he works well, etc. But that's what this match reminded me of. It's like, Jack Swagger did a few cute things here and there, but this was largely the story of John Cena kicking the shit out of him. Yeah, I know, this wasn't a bad match, and Swagger looked okay, so I'm not going to complain about it. But um, Cena looked off. I will com- I'm, I'm a Cena defender a lot of the time. Cena didn't look good here at all. He looked awkward. <sighs> He was a half a step slow on a lot of his offense. He was not well, having a good time. Uh, I, I I'm, st- I'm still a believer, though, is that Cena is starting to burn himself out from overwork. So, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Well, the autograph signings, 5,000. He does need to just okay. freshen up his character a little bit. I mean, you don't, not change it. I mean, you don't stop doing the FU and the SDFU. And God, how long has it been since they were called that? I mean, you don't change the merchandise, just add a little something, tweak it to where it's just, give us something that's different from what the exact same stuff we've been watching for the past five years. That's all I ask. Hmm. And with Punk, sometimes we have that. With, as uh, we'll get to later in the... And with, with Swagger, and with Swagger specifically, they shouldn't have fucked up at any kind of acceleration they, they gave to him, because, like, they, you're giving him the same, like, I... I spoke about this on the forums before, you're giving him the same finish as a fucking gold medalist. Like, that's that's a lot to live up to, and... Yeah. And it's kind of hard for Swagger. Yeah. Yeah, he would be better served with just some kind of a suplex or something finish. I mean, he doesn't strike... He's he's I mean, not a submission type of wrestler. Yeah. The gut wrench Maybe he bomb would be, fine. but he doesn't do it. The gut wrench bomb was a, was a fine finish. I don't know if it, why I'd stay with that. You know, I'm kind of noticing Tifus is being really silent. Really? Yeah. Yes, he is. He may, he, he may be doing something. I told no, you. whatever. Let's you make coffee. coffee. You guys want a cup? I wish. Yes. Right. Oh, I God, do. yes, I need it. <laughs> so send it through the Space Connect Island Portal Expressway right now. Um, Scotty, but, uh, beam it up. That you can... <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> After the match is over, Cena wins. Surprise, surprise! Uh, they announced the main event tonight. It's Miz versus Rey Mysterio. Uh, and it's not—that's not the main event. Yeah, it's not so much the main event as it is the the, no, the, the last the match. Last it, match it, no, it's the, the next. It's the next match. What? Yeah, Miz versus Rey Mysterio. That's the next match, isn't it? Yeah, that you're. Yeah, you're wrong, dude. It was supposed <laughs> to be the next match. They announced. So I am. Yeah, but anyways, they uh, they're hyping up that they're signing the contracts tonight. Also, gee, I wonder how that's gonna go. And um, oddly we, enough, not where we expected, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, then we get Scott Stanford backstage talking with Ricardo Rodriguez. And th- what? Where did they get that guy from? It seems it just seems odd on, to me that hmm? he was on Superstars. He's the guy they traded. Uh, he's the guy they traded the uh, coach to uh, ESPN for. Yeah, it's just odd that you know Vince has such bizarre parameters about who, what his announcers must look like, and who he allows on TV. And this old guy. It's no, he's yeah. Like, it's, what? It's like he he's very hip to Zack Ryder, if if nothing else. But he sounds very just like a lead anchor and kind of out of place in in this kind of environment. But like, hey, I I'm I got. Not much against him. Well, he's hey, not, no, I have nothing against him. It's just uh, it's it, shocking it just, to see. It just seems out of place. Yeah, I mean, on any other wrestling show on the planet, he would fit right the fuck in. But on WWE, I don't know. It's Vince's company. Let him hire who he wants. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's actually a good thing because I think I'm one of those guys who thinks who you should have a variety of looks. I that's one thing that's hurting the WWE, in my opinion, is that they tend to cookie cutter people into two similar looks Especially to each other. Because... It shakes up the status quo and just, hey, yeah. they hate that. But uh, I mean, I'm I'm glad that they have a guy who doesn't look like that. I'm just wondering why that guy. Uh. He's probably really good at his job, you know, like Mike Adamly good. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I would so hire him to be the heel commissioner if I was running an indie fed. They tried that with WWE. It didn't work. 
Yeah, he he. No, did. but it, it, with WWE, it didn't work. Imagine it in Shikara. Actually, Imagine yeah, that was Mike Adam Lee versus Dave Coulier battle for the company. Yeah, the Smarks <laughs> would actually love that one. He he just got everyone's name wrong and and then smirk when he did. <laughs> but um, but yeah, we are the interviews yeah, with Alberto Del Rio, and he 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 talks about how CM Punk ran ran from him as he was about to cash in at, at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view. Yeah. Calls him a card, et cetera. And I like the way he did it because it was, it was when heels just flat out lie, that gets annoying Yeah. eventually. Because, yeah, I beat Hulk Hogan for the heavyweight championship. I pinned him clean in the middle of the ring. One, two, three. There's only so much you can listen to that before you just want to, the guy to, before it gets to X Pac heat, as they used to call it, it's go away heat. Shut the fuck up. It's like, who are, you, who are you kidding? You know, we all saw it. We all keep seeing the replay. Yeah. Of a jackass. And, for you. and they do that because that kind of heat used to work back in the day when you still had a lot of marks who still believed wrestling was real, but not now. Yeah. But what they did, what they're doing when you do modern heel correctly like this is true because Punk did run away from Alberto. He kicked him in the head first, though. Alberto was leaving out that part. <laughs> that Punk <laughs> knocked his dick in the dirt before running off. Yeah. And that's the beauty. That's the walking the tightrope. That was very well done. Yep. But, uh, yeah, we move on from there to uh, our In Our Truth segment with Josh Matthews. And Truth does his, his, his courage spiel about um, spiders. <laughs> and how, how his mom is going to make a spider stew and feed it to little Jimmy. And My God, I cannot believe he's still running with that stupid gimmick. Yeah, it's been remarked that, like, basically his character was sort of interesting when he became sort of like, oh, you screwed me, Morrison, like, that kind of crazy. But then he just yeah. turned into a comedy gimmick. Honestly, I have no problem with that because... Yeah, I love this. Because no he's one... Yeah, it's it's funny as hell. Number two, as soon as he said "Little Jimmy" in the very first promo he made after the Morrison beatdown, it became a comedy fucking gimmick. Oh yeah, it was it great. Was Number three, they know that they given the mic so much so they could cut these funny as hell promos, and when he finally turns face, like he won't just say "Name of Town, what's up." Yeah, he'll actually this, have a person. This has, I do. <laughs> They, that's a good point. They actually should turn him back face relatively soon here. Just keep this new persona. Well, I could easily yeah, I, see him getting over in a hurry. I, I really know a lot of people are kind of hard on this, but and because a lot of people don't like comedy gimmicks in the wrestling, but guess what? Comedy gimmicks have been around since for fucking ever, I'm pretty sure, and I think these shows need a little levity to them. I mean, hell, it's the only thing that makes impact watchable these days. And it's and it's not a comedy gimmick exactly. It's not like we're talking about Santino here. Well, it makes me fucking laugh. So yeah, shut his, up. His, no, his his promos are hilarious, but his matches are serious. Is the thing? Yeah. It, it, I mean, he's not going out there and having like a Doink the Clown match or a Santino. I mean, you know, Shawn Michaels made his entire career off of doing shit like that. Yeah, being super funny in his promos, being entertaining in his promos, and in, in the matches. Yeah, there's still some funny shit there when he wants to be, but that's not the main p- purpose of the match is to be funny. It's mm. like even if there's elements of comedy in the match, it's still the purpose of the match is to make Shawn Michaels look like a cocky badass. Mm-hmm. Mm. So moving along, our next segment is actually somebody else cover the right. next segment because I was out of the room. Oh yes, yeah. getting oh, food the, the when this happened. Is anyone just, like, getting up and walking away from the computer randomly during this episode? Oh, no. No, I'm just spacing out, mostly. Uh, 30 30 minutes into Raw, and we have our main event that doesn't happen. Miz versus Rey Mysterio. (laughs) (laughs) I'm still going to hold on to the idea that it's the main event, guys. (laughs) 30 minutes into a dark match as well. Basically, (laughs) yeah. Let's move the show along. Uh, Mysterio uh, does his entrance, and Miz attacks him. He throws him on the, the, the sound... the. Yeah, he, he slams him into the uh, the uh, stage logo. Yep, the big W. Yeah, which Miz is so... They don't do that much. Oh, Miz They've been doing quite it a lot bit. recently. And it's uh, become Miz's thing. It really is yeah. Miz's thing. 
You say he, he needs a thing. He needs he, a gimmick like that. Yeah, he he does that essentially when he's pissed that like someone else is having the spotlight. Yeah, it's like his version of the punt. Basically, pe- people die if I don't if if all eyes aren't on me. Um, he's he's all every top guy the, needs some kind of hyper death finisher to take somebody out for like to put him out for a week or something. That isn't the stroke. Yeah, <laughs> but like he he goes over his like must see TV kind of thing, Jimmy Fallon, Conan O'Brien, et cetera, et cetera, and the fight like they announced that like he uh, Triple H has said that Miz has to be in a match, so he's going to be against Kofi Kingston. And to to talk about this a little more, it's funny to me whenever Justin Roberts is the one to announce this. We get word from the COO that Miz must be in a match, like. <laughs> They, they, they don't want to use the computer. The set's there. Yeah. Have they forgotten about it? Or are they doing anything with the computer now? Fuck me. I thought that they would have... It's out there. ...that it was Triple H. That that it was like, it's been me all these months. They wanted to... Yeah, that would be easy. That actually would have made sense. It would have made sense because yeah. one of the things that the GM said was he took Bret Hart off Raw because, like, if I had my way, he would never be on TV. He's Shawn Michaels' friend. Like they, they never. He and Brent never. Yeah. And, the hatchet. and he's a tweener and kind of a dick. And the anonymous yeah. GM is a tweener and kind of a dick. And kind of so ripping off other people's catchphrases would be the kind of thing that he'd do to throw people off. And it also, would make so I would, much sense. It's like so many fucking times they've had an opportunity to just like. And I wouldn't put it above Triple H to use the phrase "Why you be hating yo." Oh no, I wouldn't put unless. That. Uh, the the alternate, the one theory I like that I came up with is if they reveal the anonymous Raw GM to be Mick Foley, who is rumored to be looking to be coming back. What does he have against Bret Hart? Nothing. He can make up something. Doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, it's, Mick, it's Mick frickin' Foley. I mean, yeah, I guess yeah, so. Yeah, and I, if, I, I usually don't like power struggle angles, but if it's Mick Foley versus Triple H in a power struggle angle... And I'm sure CM Punk will be in there See, somewhere, and maybe Stone Cold. That would be one, interesting. That fine. Number two, Mick Foley. Like, if Triple H continues to play like the whole neutral thing, where it's almost they're almost hinting that he's going to screw someone, he doesn't do anything this Sunday. He could still appoint Mick Foley as the the GM, or like have them do it like in advance months ago because he he respects him. Like the matches that they've had. Yeah. It, Although I've I've thing. heard that like Triple H is and the click in general are. In the back, or are those guys who bury Foley? Ah, uh, yeah. Don't really appreciate what he, he did. Got for over him. for being a but, Jim guy, but um. Well, I don't think you can bury Foley these days anymore. He can show up anywhere, and he's over. Yeah. Yeah, but they still will. Triple H is still a bigger deal and more important in the WWE than Mick Foley. Yeah, we're spending a lot of time on these hypothetical what ifs. How about we talk about our main event for the night, The Miz versus Kofi Kingston? (laughs) The Uh, second main event for the night. (laughs) Yes, uh, Miz versus Kingston. I I don't quite remember much stuff stuff from this. I I didn't think it was. That was a Kofi Kingston match. You can kind of tell how it goes. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of the wrestling on this Raw kind of just. It's there. It It was there. it's, It's like the. It felt. We've seen this before. It felt a little stale. It felt like we've seen all, all these matchups several times, and we probably have. Well, yeah. Thing about like people are kind of starting to realize that Kofi Kingston is is sort of like a, is is a one trick pony. Like we we've spoken about his one pop, and like like last year, I kept on saying maybe they'll finally push him to the main event, like they were going to do with Randy Orton, or like it looked like they were doing. And then Randy Orton had a fit in the ring. I don't think that they're they have any plans to push him any any further than where he is now. No, they don't. No. no. I think you no. could do. I, mean, I think you could get a world championship reign out of Kofi. I think you could do it if done right. But he's not going to be a top guy. That's he, true. He's kind of in that role right now where he's uh, he's that guy that they put the mid card title on when they have everyone else in the mid card doing something more important. Yeah, he is very much you know the intercontinental champion for life kind of dude. He, he's their new, uh, you know. I don't, I don't. I don't want to. No, not Jared, Jared. But he's he's the next Shelton Benjamin, or or the new Chris Benoit. Oh, that's that's kind of. Like oh no, he's not Chris Benoit. Come on. No, no, I'm not saying it. Like, oh god, I was a, I was thinking, I was about no, to because say, oh, Chris oh, Benoit oh, got a heavyweight championship. Yeah, but then he went right back to the uh, card. 
like the rest of his career. Yeah, this wins the end. Yes, Shovel and Paradise Plot, Skull Crushing <laughs> Genghis doesn't even want to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, we've been going on for quite a bit. Oh. <clears throat> But uh, backstage promo, Josh Matthews interviews CM Punk, and he talks about, confirms what uh, some of us were saying before, that Triple H, he's only the special guest ref because he always needs the spotlight, and he, he he's, true. Punk knows what's good for business. It's it's him kicking the crap out of John Cena this Sunday. And the bad part about Triple H is that he really is kind of a draw. Ratings and buy rates do tend to go up when he is heavily involved in oh, the top end. Oh, no, 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 trying to argue that, but no, that, uh, that's it. No, the unfortunate part is that uh, reality and Triple H's perception of himself do, to an extent, match. But yeah. he just thinks he's he thinks he's um, Steve Undertaker. <sighs> Well, you know, he thinks he's bigger than everybody. He thinks he's the guy. He's like, no, you're like number five. He, that's what he never gets, and that's what he can't stand, and that's why he gets under his skin, and that's why he just always constantly has to portray himself as the guy. Because he'll never be the guy, and that it kills him that he can't be. Well, I don't know how true that is. Sensing a lot of... Uh... Uh, yeah, this is... I've never met the man. I've never spoken to him, never shaken his hand. This is just from all the various stories I've heard from people who have known him. Paint a picture of a guy who genuinely does love wrestling. Genuinely wants to be the best wrestler in the entire world. But is kind of jealous of anybody who gets to that position similar to his, who isn't a friend of his. So if you're not Undertaker or if you're not Shawn Michaels, he doesn't really want to let you look good. Well, well again, we'll see. That's, that's kind of interesting because he, he's the guy that made Randy Orton look good. He made Batista look good. He made Sheamus look good. No, no, wait, 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 wait. But every time he came back and always got his heat back. I mean, Batista was the one, because Batista was his friend. That goes back to what I'm saying. Guys, he befriends in real life, and I think he was he viewed Orton as a project as well. Okay. And when he decides, I'm going to make this guy a star, that's okay for well, him to lose. The hilarity of it is, like, we're probably going to get to this at some point on SmackDown, but the whole thing with Sin Cara and, like, how Mystico is, like, really the wellness policy and the suspension, like, people are saying... Like, oh, no, they're not going to give up on him. It's Triple H's first big signing, and he's going to want to prove that, that he could he could, he could could do this, that he mm. could do the talent relations. I don't, I don't think anyone would hold him against him if he didn't, though. And, that, and that's that's the other big thing. It's like, I, I hear what you're saying, Genghis, about all this stuff, but I really don't see that as a problem, per se, as far as, you know, him. The problem comes when Triple H starts putting himself above people who could make the company more money, which has happened on many occasions. Yeah, but then, too, in most of those occasions, uh, there's always someone over him that had the final say and that, that, that decided to listen to Triple H instead of saying, uh, yeah, Triple H, shut the hell oh, yeah. up this way. Well, and that gets into, and that's a much longer argument. That's yeah. like, do you blame Hulk Hogan or Eric Bischoff for killing WCW? Oh, it's it's... it's both people's, I mean, it, it's like that. It's both people's faults. I mean, Triple yeah. H didn't have to push it. That guy didn't have to listen to him. My fucking catchphrase is, it's yeah. not that simple. Yeah. So let's go. Let's make it simple. Let's get back on fucking track. Yes. Uh, yes. One where, where, where were we? Oh, 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 oh. Hey, bring, it, bring it back to this interview. How do you do I, that thing with your mouth? That was creepy. But bringing it back to this interview. Um, <laughs> anyway, for the third time, bringing it back to this interview. I thought I thought this interview was really kind of unique and good because the way Punk's character is and the way other characters that are similar to him behave in wrestling with in these kinds of interviews with guys like Josh Matthews, kind of expect him to kind of treat them like Triple H and Shawn Michaels used to treat Michael Cole, you know, just or mm. Rock used to treat uh, Kevin Kelly. But no, CM Punk 
went a completely different direction. Instead of really being venomous with his tongue, he just cut a straight interview and just answered the question and wasn't an asshole about it. I'm trying to get Thank God he, didn't, he didn't act like... When they he didn't act like he was trying to be a character with it, I guess is what it... Well, so. you get the idea that he wants to... His character is that, like, he, he, he's, he has all this integrity. He's not going to talk to someone behind their back. If he wants to be a dick, he's going to be a dick in front of their faces, which is what he usually does during the yeah. big contract yeah. signing sequences, stuff like that. But uh, this match, um, I give good uh, arm offense on arm psychology, Del Rio, good selling with CM Punk, uh, two, oh. two good workers. Yeah, very good match. I thought they had a... Yeah. Uh, I've seen them have better before. Certainly. Before. certainly. Actually, this... This, so, this but for, but for a match like a, on Raw, I mean, this was a good match. Yeah, for no, match. it was a good match. Um, no, my point being is that I can imagine these guys having a legitimately great four and a half star match, and this was a tiny well, little preview taste. Well, of who the fuck knows? Well, I, if just, they're going the road that some people think they're going, I can see that match happening at a pay per view at some point. Maybe imagine yeah. these two guys in a ladder match. <laughs> oh, that, I, no, I, I get that feeling whenever I see either of these guys versus pretty much anyone in a match on Raw yeah. uh, or SmackDown. Yeah, I mean, Alberto is a fucking miracle super worker, and Punk just is so good and knows enough that he can work with almost anybody. It's just Punk. So, and, I mean, you put them together, you get a good match. And, it, by the way, the entire match, four minutes, it felt longer, didn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and in and in a good way also. Like hey, you didn't you didn't you're not like, they didn't get to the finish and you're like finally or anything like that. You're like, well, yeah. it's like one of those rare times you talk about something that lasts uh, shorter than than it's fe- felt, and that's usually a negative. This definitely was a positive. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was drawn out in that nice way. Some guys are awesome. To, uh, you know, short short matches are okay as long as you can put guys in there who know how to work a short match and make it fucking awesome, and Alberto and Punk are two of those guys. Yeah. As, yeah. as, as opposed to saying time dragged with this match, it's more like time slowed down for you to take in every detail. Yeah. But uh, yeah. suffice it to say, uh, cross arm breaker b- blocked, uh, he, Punk hits Del Rio with that huge roundhouse that he finished off Mysterio with some months ago, and then he hits the GTS. Mm-hmm. After Although, I wish Punk would get a new finisher. The go to sleep is he always looks awkward with that. Yeah, he does. And he has, and it is a little dangerous. He has not broken a couple of noses and ch- chipped a couple of teeth with that. It, it almost he, it almost looks like a poor man's fu. Well, if if we want to do kayfabe this, like he could start using the pet plunge if just the troll Triple H. Uh, the the GTS yeah. it, it's always. It's kind of looked like you're trying to do something new and innovative, but it's not working. Well, see, I I've always liked the the whole concept of the move being like a, a sort of like assassin esque kind of strike, yeah. just like well, a swift strike. Yeah, but when you've got some little cruiserweight X division guy who who knows how to take that move correctly, it looks awesome. But when you're doing it on like Kane, or even John Cena. No, yeah, yeah the, 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 the big guy, but he's not really the biggest guy, but he's still a big guy. No, yeah, the, just, one, the average. The you know, ones, the one that ended off Money in the Bank certainly looked more awkward than than it usually did. But then, I mean, just let him do a guys. DDT or some damn thing, whatever. It doesn't matter. Just not yeah. that move because it's and, and it's and it's not a knock on the bigger guys that take that move and it looks awkward. It's just when you get that big, some things just look awkward when you try yeah. to do them. And, uh, Christ, this is going to be a long review. Oh, yeah. yeah. We I, are I was rambling. thinking about something uh, no, that's going to happen on SmackDown that we're going to be <laughs> talking about in like an hour from now. Believe me, though, you, you, you'll you be surprised. SmackDown usually zips by pretty quick. Yeah, it enough. does. But, uh, we, we find a... Re- of zipping by next match. Oh, yes. We have, we have a recap of uh, Beth Phoenix attacking Kelly Kelly from, from the week before, and she's now... Working against Eve Torres. Can I just say I'm loving this new gimmick that Beth Phoenix and Natalia are doing? Yeah, it's it's it's, 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 it's basically like when CM Punk was still a heel, like in the beginning of this year, and he was calling Cena on like on like being a bit cruel to his opponents, even though he's like the rep- represents the fans and stuff like that. It's the 
the righteous heel kind of thing. Yeah, though I, I, I get the feeling this, um, is kind of, this is probably the gimmick they were going to give Karma if she didn't get pregnant. Well, I, yeah, I, I, see them keeping this, uh, I could see them keeping this gimmick going long enough for Karma to return. As a face. And, she, and then she just turns on them and just like, you know what, fuck? Yeah. No, not I'm, I'm Karma. <laughs> she left as a face. Yeah. Like, now people like the Bellas, people like Kelly Kelly are going to be crawling, come crawling back to her after, well, Bellas, mostly, after they... Well, I mean, you can, you could so make it like a three-way deal. You could have the generic divas are one part of the triangle. You have the diva killers, Natalia and Beth, and then you have Karma on her own. She doesn't like those fucking divas, but she doesn't like the diva killers either, and there's a... Well, it's like the diva... You do a lot with... The, the divas are trying to get Karma to join them because they need the protection. The diva killers are trying to get her to join them because they like her style. She's well, just like, fuck it, it's competition. I'll take you all on. Well, with Karma, I doubt huh? she's... Well, I know she's probably going to be in the divas division at first, but it's clear she wants to move past that. Well, or she could just redo keep you with her. It'd be nice, but don't hold your breath. Yeah, I know. WWE probably not going to allow it unless something major happens back. Or, or they could, or they could just like go nuts and give her Erica Maiden Army gimmick. Yeah. <laughs> Although there are a lot of guys in the WWE, I would love to see wrestle Awesome Kong. Yeah. That would make for some fucking awesome matches. Shanks. Legitimately. Shanks. I mean, imagine Awesome Kong versus CM Punk. That'd be good too. I, I honestly don't know what to think of this, but like I I, I honestly think Seamus like, versus uh, Awesome Kong would be my my pick. Yeah, yeah. That, that would be pretty cool. But um, just, just, just for the sake of getting the line from the commentators, do not trust your contrast, folks. You are seeing correct. <laughs> That's a little talk about a black and white feud. <laughs> Black and white characters, no great. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so, this match we we should probably yeah. uh, mention it. Um, it's an okay match. Beth is really working her ass off. Yeah, Eve. yeah. She she carried her. She carried Eve, who yeah. still can't do a fucking drop kick. Don't uh, they all? None of these women can do. It. Hardly anybody. I, there was who was it? Somebody on to... Cena. Cena. Cena threw a shitty fucking drop kick in his match. Hardly anybody in this company, it seems like, knows how to do a good drop kick, Mike, aside from uh, Cody Rhodes. Well, no, you got Dolph Ziggler, you got um, Mike McGillicuddy actually does a damn good drop kick. It's a funny thing, that's one of the few things I noticed about him. It's not him. the only thing he it's knows just, to do. Just, the drop kick is the one move which is done so often and so poorly, is my problem. It's like, I'm, how many great drop kicks have you seen versus how many shitty ones? Or average ones, I guess. That's, it's one of those things where if they do it right, no one cares. But if they do it wrong, it really stands out. Yeah, but they if but when they do it wrong, they keep making them go out there and do it anyway. Yeah. Why? Don't do something unless you're good at it. If you can't throw a good punch, don't throw a good punch. I mean, don't try to punch. Use forearms. Use chops. Work around. Figure out what you're good at. Yeah, it definitely seems like what... Quite a bit of the the divas do um, yeah. from any anyone from uh, the Bellas to AJ, but and with the divas uh, you can see that very specifically because they have to you know literally write down the matches for these girls in the back probably and work with them in the ring ahead of time. I'd imagine that the girls spend more time in the ring working, walking and talking their matches before the show starts than a lot of the guys do, just because they don't have the experience that the guys have. These girls are indie shows, you know? Yeah. And that they have to more have a hands-on control to make sure everything goes okay. Uh, I think this actually might be a five-hour show with the pace we're moving. Uh, uh, all right. So, let's, try, uh, try. let's try and cut down on the tangents a bit. I don't think we've had a segment yet where we didn't have a tangent. Yeah, I'm having fun. But um, <laughs> uh, Eva's about to hit a moonsault, and uh, Beth, like, chops her down and hits the glam slam wins. She she cuts a promo where she, she promises with her reign there will be no more booty popping, uh, no more splits or stink faces. And, oh, yeah, someone took umbrage at that whole comment about no splits. Someone who was recently fired. And are are, is are we really going to go on on another tangent right now after we already just said... We need to pick up the pace. 
It's Molina. It was Molina. I mean, moving along. It was Molina. Yeah, Molina. Well, Molina it's took from John Morrison's career. Dolph Ziggler versus Alex Riley. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you do a tangent. All right. <laughs> uh, yeah, after the next point match. match. After the yeah, next very commercial, we got uh, well, Dolph Ziggler and Alex Riley. It's pretty much setting up that they're probably going to have a match at SummerSlam because right well, now it's only a four-match card. Well, yeah, Backlash, I agree with you, but fuck me, they didn't announce it even though they had fucking seven minutes to do it. They're gonna it, do, If they have a match, it's going to be the night of for God only knows what reason why they're not promoting it as anyone to guess. Although I do uh, want to ask this question. Back a couple of years ago when you saw NXT Season 2, did anyone think that in two years you'd be actually excited to see an Alex Riley match? Uh, well... I, Alex Riley was one of the better uh, members of that, that whole group. Yeah, but I'm still not excited to see an Alex Riley match. I mean, he's okay. Yeah, hey, he's, he's, he's been really trying to get himself over, and he's doing a damn good job in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean he, he's did, did, did you ever think there would be a time where you didn't, you wouldn't, you would actually be surprised that they're not actually booking and hyping a match with him at SummerSlam? That's mm. that's kind of the thing I'm getting at here. He's really yeah. his ass. He's well, still, it'll it'll bolster his, the sport that he that that he got after uh, feuding with the Miz that might be waning. Yeah, if, like Dolph yeah, Ziggler getting more to, mic presence. He needs to. I'm hearing an echo. He needs to be uh, pushed hard into some kind of a hot angle to get him away from the Miz and to separate Miz and Riley in the fans' minds, because right now they still see those two guys together, you know, first as friends, then feuding. They need to make that split and do it with some kind of dramatic angle to make people remember, oh, yeah, fuck, Alex Riley is now the guy who's fighting this guy. Well, that's kind of what they're doing with this feud with Dolph Ziggler. I mean, it's hardly epic, but, I mean, if you want someone to get you over, hey, I could think of worse people than Dolph Ziggler. Yeah, but I, I think the best way to do that would be, uh, and, and the problem is that he doesn't need the time off, but have an injury angle where Miz actually goes, uh, Riley goes over Miz and puts Miz out for a month or something. But, uh, but that, that requires that putting Miz out for a month. And that's, that's not going to happen. Yeah, and that, that's the thing. Yeah. It's like that really works best when the person going out actually needs some time off to recover from something. Okay, let's lay down. Yeah, you know, like the, the whole gist of this uh, match and the let's, result. Uh, uh, fuck. And we were doing so well yesterday. <laughs> and the new rule for the rest of the show: no more fantasy booking. Let's get the, let's just get through this. Yeah. No we're, the match would be a great right, booker. It, <laughs> fuck. Fuck off, people. The match is okay, but. <laughs> it, it doesn't go anywhere because Vicky interferes and it ends in a DQ. Yeah, it's a minute and she slaps a DQ. And and, they're, and then they're teasing that Adolph is going to dump Vicky as his manager or whatever. Mm-hmm. Eh. Not not a good enough idea yet. He, he should do it somewhere down the line, but like I, I don't think he has enough like heat by himself. I don't, I don't think he's strong enough on the mic yet. No, I think he's fine on the mic. I, I just think that the, the crowd is not really taking it. Like that if um, I, I think what they're gonna do is they're gonna have, have a couple of experiments of him going down to the ring by himself, and if he doesn't get an adequate amount of heat, they'll probably pair him up with her again. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Next. Um, Truth versus Morrison match that again should have been saved for for this Sunday. Yeah. And. Really, how, how many times have we seen this match? Though? And, and it's not a bad match, but how many times? Yeah, really has. I mean, we should have. We haven't seen it because oh, yeah. Morrison's been out. Where have you been? Well, we saw it when uh, Morrison basically took his number one contendership by by manipulating him. He means that these guys have wrestled each other a thousand times over the years. They have. Yeah. But the, what they needed here was like, what they needed here was some kind of like. Uh, down leading to a cage match at SummerSlam. And the cage match doesn't have to be the main event. You can have the cage match be like number four on the card. That's okay. It's a WWE show. People will accept that. Oh, but yeah, no, that one it's pay-per-view just... They yeah, I, I think they could have used something oh. like that in a lot of these angles that led to a pay-per-view yeah. match. It's like, it's like they're on the cusp of something really interesting and juicy for a lot of these things. They're just not quite pushing it over the edge to Yeah. Like, I... I... 
uh, and uh, it's cold in hell as I say this, but you need a little Russo. Put a little bit of stipulations on those matches. WWE seems kind of allergic to that. It's a, a, ni- a nice light peppering of gimmicky shit. It's okay. Well, see, what they want to do is they want to restrict the gimmicks to the to the pay per views that are that are titled uh, those instead of just putting yeah. them on their their bigger uh, ones. Which has been a losing battle <laughs> as far as the buy rates have been concerned. That's it, a failure. It, it yeah. kills. It kills the. Uh, the the legitimate like God, I don't even know where I'm going with this I can't think of the word <laughs> no I, oh, I know I what you're saying because before hell in the when hell in the cell used to be like the final end to the ultimate blood feud I mean it's an organic this, growth to that point in the feud yeah, yeah. it's oh. like this is the end there is nothing else we can do after this. No, it's like oh, we oh the, it's it's like shoot, but it's like oh, it's that time of year again. Who you who do you just happen to be feuding yeah. with? Yeah, yeah, it's like these two guys are feuding. Oh, let's we got a pay per view with a Hell in a, with Hell in a Cell matches. Let's just put them in one. It really just doesn't even make sense for the character. Which is why I bet Brock versus Undertaker in Hell in a Cell drew a hell of a lot more buys than whatever the hell last year's Hell in a Cell pay per view main event was. was. And, and it, and it, 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 it takes away Kane Taker. It, it takes away from the idea of uh, this guy's like a specialist in this kind of match, like you know Edge being a ladder match specialist yeah. or um, Sh- uh, Triple H being a, a Hell in a Cell specialist or something like that, because everyone gets a turn, you know, yeah. and, and it kind of loses its specialness. But yeah. don't want to go on too long. Stick to the yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it's a, it's it a decent a match, but it, it's kind of short. Our truth wins. Yay. Yeah, we, we're, I'm, we basically. I am three years past giving a fuck at this point, okay? <laughs> and Morrison's on his way out in the next few months, anyway, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. God damn. Ugh. I wish I didn't have to agree, but I do. Um, it's sad, but it's going to happen. Hey, that was the main event. <laughs> <laughs> Lies! In in, Lies, uh, uh, in TNA in TNA language, you, it's basically the match you have before the reaction segments. <laughs> but um, yeah, Morrison's still sewing his neck for for whatever reason. He's probably not fully healed. It's probably yeah. Legit. Oh, he took that one stupid fucking bump where he was standing on the guardrail and Kofi swept his um, legs out from under him. Like Morrison. I appreciate what you're trying to do, but Jesus Christ. Yes, yeah, they could yourself, man. No if one would miss it around. if they didn't see it. This, this is on a, this is, you know, on, uh, a sh- on Raw, on a show to build up to a show I don't think you're even booked on, man. Don't do that. And can I just say, Molina better have a damn good pussy if you're throwing your career away for that. Mm. I know, let's turn to our, ex- our, our field expert, Batista. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so we go to the... Shit. Why were, oh, by the way, why were they getting that... Stop stuff? fucking... Oh. I'm sorry, shit is randomly falling off my desk. <laughs> Are the laws of gravity <laughs> being I don't, I, I don't know. I'm just... Trying to arrange things and there's a there's a promiscuous I, Molina joke in here somewhere. <laughs> uh, Wasn't there like a Stephen King short story about some dude who was so angry that he managed to kill himself with like splinters and things inside his own office just attacked him? Sounds more like a Twilight Zone episode. I think it was a Stephen King short story. Eh, we are far off the beaten track. Back to this show. One last comment before we get to the final segment. What well, was the deal with the polls they were running all night long? Like, who do you think will walk out as of SummerSlam as undisputed WWE champion? I, I didn't notice. I, I honestly can't. Mm, I don't. Again, um, three years don't give a fuck. But, yeah, we will gloss no, over they something. Kept, they kept running that over and over again. They mentioned it over and over and I, over again throughout the night. What was the point? I don't know, man. Like, I, I honestly have no idea what you're talking about. No, I'm trying to fit. They said it over and over again, and I'm trying to figure out why, because it's not like a text thing. It wasn't uh, they're not making money off of it. I don't think it they're just 
is it a page hits they're trying to drive up? They just want to remind themselves that people actually watch their fucking show. Well, you could if you want to be reminded that people watch their shows nowadays. Like they're fucking like after peep someone has a segment, they're they'll be trending on Twitter, even on SmackDown. Yeah, yeah. I've, a lot lately. Punk really did make this relevant. Mm-hmm. Okay, finally, main event talking. Go. No, but actually, uh, there's this other backstage segment with Christian where he says <sighs> Triple H is going to want to hear what I have to say this this Friday on SmackDown. Now we go to the contract. Yeah, we'll get to that. And uh, Triple H comes up with Johnny Ace, motherfuckers. <laughs> Yes, I He's actually running. great in this role. That's because oh, yeah. it comes like, naturally to him. I, I almost feel bad, ashamed of myself, because, like, fuck me, I'm in, very endeared, endeared to him as a heel role. Like, <laughs> god damn. This is, He's good. It's perfect for him. Yeah. This is the best role I've ever seen him in in any wrestling company ever. And I've That's because he's not acting. Lot. He really is this much of a douche. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. That's awesome. <sighs> Love to hate, but, um, yeah, uh, basically, Triple H wants to get the signing down right now. Punk interrupts him, and, and he's, he's like, yeah, like, fuck these contract signings. They, they, they always end with, with a, with some kind of brawl, like, like, not, none of this really means anything. Yeah. P- Punk was basically just saying, why are we even here? I mean, the, the contract signing, that's bullshit. We know we're having the match. They just want to see us punch each other. Yeah. And really, I, I think I, one thing I really like about a lot of these segments that involve Triple H and Punk is before they started doing the Triple H and Punk segments, they had someone come out and kind of interrupt Triple H when he was talking since he's been put in this new role. And he says, no one will interrupt me. I do not appreciate that. That's not cool. You know, trying to lay down his law. And every single time, they've made a point <laughs> to have Punk interrupt Triple H while he's talking. But yeah, like, highlight of the first part of the segment is uh, Punk starts to, like, sort of chide him about uh, the chaperone. And, and Triple H is like, yeah, like, your movie. Yeah, what was that movie? It went straight to DVD. And he's like, yeah, it did. Like, yours. <laughs> Punk probably has been in a movie at some point, I'd imagine. <laughs> IMDb, I'm going. Yeah, I'm doing it. Why the fuck not? But uh, he, he then he introduces like that that recent video that The Rock released, making fun of Cena, and I didn't actually see that when it came out because, although I'll, I'll say like me neither, I'll, I'll admit uh, up and fuck straight up and down like The Rock is a huge draw for them, even though yeah. I don't like the way they're booking him. He's a, he's a fucking huge draw. You can't deny that. But I, I but nonetheless, I avoided this video and like I, watching the clips that played uh, seemed like it was for good reason. It was it was really just the Rock slinging a bunch of shit. Yeah. Like um, it was I liked it. I, I mean, it was the typical Rock promo, but that's a typical Rock promo. Uh, you know. Well, the typical Rock promo is getting old. Okay. Yeah, well, it's not so much that it just—it didn't even really seem like it. To be. It just seems like he was just kind of doing doing that really like childish voice and kind of like it, there, there's something something seemed a little bit like more off the cuff and like less like theatric than him him, like, him doing that childish voice to mock people is getting to be about the same level as uh, Adam Sandler doing that <laughs> kind of stuff. It's, Okay, we we get it, Rock. You look down on these people. You're trying to say they're childish and beneath you. Yeah. yeah. The point is that... Um, Shampoo even is best. A, a, even with, like, a, an emailed promo from two months ago from Rock, is still better than every other talker in the ring except Punk. But, uh, except for the fact that he's not in the ring. Yeah. But uh, nonetheless, most much of the talk of, of the rock promo is like he, he kind of he kind of accuses Cena of being just as as big a phony of, uh, or rather the rock of being just as big a phony as as Rocky accuses Cena of being. Uh, and Cena says like he's like ah, he's like I'm not gonna bullshit like I won't have the millions like you could hear the people boo me. He talks about like his comp- he's like a little too too PG. He's a modern day Hulk Hogan. He could improve his work rate or his five moves of doom. He says five moves of doom. 
Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that point. I actually heard a Scott Keith fucking quote uh, spoken on Raw: "The Five Moves of Doom." That was hilarious. I was laughing my ass off when he said that. Yeah, it's just a, a, a as a shot to guys like us when when we're doing our job poorly. He's like, "Yeah, Cena didn't sell enough in that match. Star and a half." Yeah. And he's right. <laughs> but um he he, well, he says nonetheless like I I I won't give up on the fans. Uh, that that's who I care about and and just as like Triple H is about to like say something punk interrupts him again and he's like and I don't know exactly what prompted this but he he speaks to Laurenitis and like asks asks him if he uh like all, all the people that like he fired. Did he? Did he personally go up to Vladimir Kozlov or or Harry Smith, not D. H. Smith, and and say you're fired? No, he called him up. Yeah. Yeah, I love that part too. I I, yeah. I just love this. In, like this entire feud is almost like they're completely breaking kayfabe. It, I mean, like you you could it, take it, what they're in saying in a smart way, in, a, in an entertaining way. Yeah, like I mean, oh no, they're they're definitely being entertaining, but I just I just like how. Um, what they're saying works both in and out of kayfabe. Yes. And it's basically like, I like the way they set it up too. He's not just throwing out names. Uh, Cena's say, calling him, he's saying, you're the, you're the voice of the voice. Let's prove it. And Punk is like, okay, Vladimir Kozlov, Harry Smith, uh, Chris Masters, like that kind of thing. He, yeah. They're not uh, going to be here anymore on your television. Uh, I'm really starting calling to them by their real names too. This, and this whole promo is just becoming like a series of random clicks and noises. <laughs> yeah. hmm? Um, um, what? I don't know. Fucking ignore me. Wow. Okay. Ignore me. It's the grand well! But uh, once once again, like he did with Randy Orton, uh, Punk references things that happened four years ago. When he's like, oh, I, he's like, the the reason I hate you so much is because you're, you're still like the empire. You're still like the champ. You are not the underdog. You do not represent these fans. You went up to me after I won my first title, the ECW championship. And, and you said, I almost gave up on you. And he's pissed at, and Punk is very pissed about that, which fair play, man. Like that, that's kind of, <laughs> was a backhanded compliment. <laughs> yeah. And the funny thing is like, Last week, like as this whole shit was going down, uh, Dave Logano was posting his articles. One of one of which was that the WWE just did not want to fucking push CM Punk at all. Yeah. They did, they never wanted to do that. They Vince, his personal belief was that like uh, they the fans wouldn't buy anyone who doesn't do drugs or drink. Like they just mm. vehemently against the idea that that someone like that would be a star. He only got his first title because uh, everyone else was being busted for drugs, like right after after Benoit happened, and they were yeah, get, getting they get, investigated. They needed someone that was really squeaky clean in real life to yeah. set. But show. now, apparently, Punk really does have fairly significant power in the company. Yeah, I mean, just look at the shit they let him say on live TV. Oh, yeah, yeah no, that, no, that, no, jab no. About, that jab at Cena about what Cena said to him. The, the reaction of, on his face when Punk brought that up, it's almost like he wasn't expecting that to be brought up at all. And he's just kind of like, I can't even think of anything to reply to that with. But basically, what I like about him bringing up that incident is that it pretty much is like, it is like an argument for Cena being like the voice of the company. Like, I almost gave up on you. Oh, but yeah. you, you never did drugs when everyone else did, so here's your title. We almost gave up on you. But, um... We almost thought you were useless. Um, basically, like, and that's raw, everybody. <laughs> da, 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 yeah. Da, da, da. yeah. No, we, we left out like where Cena basically retorted with the, with basically the point saying like this, this SummerSlam match is, is going to make or break you. You need this. If you lose, then, then what claim do you have to being the best in the world? What claim do you have to being the voice of the voiceless? Like, and pretty much everything up. Uh, else of that nature. Yeah, but if John Cena wins clean, what, what's Punk's argument then? So that, that's why it's a really important match. It's really interesting to see how they go with it. 
No, not, not once, <laughs> like, throughout, like, the aftermath. <laughs> We're of- still going. <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> uh, and finally, at the end of... <laughs> I love you guys. I swear to God. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just ignore me! God. And Punk finally delivers the physicality by uh, knocking the shit out of Johnny Ace and running off. Yep. Which is a cute kind of, like, A, yeah, the people always... It, it's a very smarky way of handing of doing that, of having the internet favorite CM Punk hit the internet's most hated man, Johnny Ace. But yes. in storyline terms, as pointed out earlier, thank you for the example, it also works in kayfabe. It does. Yep. So I'm, I mean, I'm not happy that they built up, that they brought Punk back this fast. I think they should have let it simmer longer. I think they should milk it for a month. For the go-home show, they did it as well as they could have on the night. Yeah. But um, amid amid all this, uh, Cena tackles Triple H, trying to get to Punk. And we we set up the the possible build-up for for him screwing someone. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's Raw. Moving on to SmackDown. Smucka down and the worst fucking song in all of wrestling. You know, uh, guys, guys, I guys, real quick. The enemy um, song Dingus, so Dingus, much. Dingus. Uh, how about how about if we go ahead and cut here and just like start a whole new episode for SmackDown? Yeah, we're running long. That's <laughs> <laughs> what I keep uh, saying. We, from the what's beginning. the timestamp at? What's the timestamp at? Oh shit! I don't even. It doesn't even tell you what timestamp is. I know we've been going for at least an hour though. Oh, my God. Yeah, we've added an hour on Raw easily. So uh, let's go ahead and do uh, what gets more screen time than Johnny Curtis. I don't know. I guess so. What gets more screen time than Melina? (laughs) Yes. And we're thankful for it. I don't know. Shit. Shit, I got it. Um, the the claim that there will be no splits gets more screen time than Jay Lethal. I mean, Molina. <laughs> <laughs> fucking reflex, guys. Like, stayed with uh, the poll asking you which champion was going to walk out with the belt on SummerSlam got more screen time than J- Molina. <laughs> um, Samuel Adams Boston Lager gets more screen time than whoever the fuck we're talking about. That wasn't even on the show. Yeah, well, that's what I've been drinking, so suck it. All right. <laughs> Here's the quality. Her pubes getting mistaken for Mike Knox's beard gets more screen time than Molina. <laughs> oh, no, I, wait, I got, I got the perfect one. CM Punk mentioning everyone else that was fired except Molina gets more screen time than Molina. There's a... <laughs> Oh, Jerry. The fact that Eve Torres still has a job and she doesn't gets more screen time than Melina. Beth Phoenix's huge rack. <laughs> <laughs> I had to say it. I think we got to cut it all right there. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, this has it. been uh, Dark Match a- with uh, Tifus. Christopher says. Jenga. Backlash. Saying good luck and good night. And we'll see you on the SmackDown show. Ha! And here you thought I was just another bubble-headed blonde bimbo. Well, the joke's on you. I'm not even a real blonde.